Hello and welcome to Life in Style with Zara. I'm your host, Zara Durrani. Beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder and it changes from culture to culture. The use of cosmetic products can be traced back nearly 5,500 years. Now today, nearly 19 billion is spent worldwide on beauty products. What does it take to be truly beautiful? We'll be asking that question to models, actors, as well as a talent agent who grapple with the question of what it takes to be truly beautiful. Make sure to stick around. Alicia Sahota, who is 2011's Miss Universe Canada first runner-up. Alicia, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. So, Miss Universe Canada, we were talking earlier and you were saying you've been training for an entire year. Yes, roughly a year and it basically consists of physical training, runway training, even speech training, etiquette, international etiquette, and... What is that? Tell, tell us about your training. Okay, well, they actually teach you how to get in and out of a limo, which is very interesting, and how you should properly have your legs together and swing in rather than... We're all so used to just putting one leg in and the other leg. Oh, like they have it in the movies, the perfect, yes, the, the moment. Yes, the okay. way. It's all, yes, you almost have to be like a princess. <laughs> so tell us about your journey into acting and modeling and what made you want to get into Miss Universe. So for me, what really drove me to entering this competition was last year around the end of August I experienced a very tragic experience and I was caught in a grenade at a bar in Mexico Wow! and uh, everyone around me they died or they were amputated and absolutely distraught if anything and I along with the person that I was with at the table were the only ones that really were not affected and we were right near the table that was aimed at, targeted so I learned from that that, you know, tomorrow you might not be here, right now we might not be here and it's, it's an empowering moment and decision that told me, hey, I can go and make a difference, I can go and represent women and tell them that, you know, no matter what the situation, whether you're hit or hurt by somebody or whether you've been knocked down, by a grenade in my case. You can get back up, you can dedicate yourself for a year to train, you can dedicate yourself to know about the news, to know about what your right is as a woman and even for men. Everything that we do as Miss Universe Canada applies for men, absolutely, right? So that was my motivation, my main motivation. It's uh, like on your Facebook, mm -hmm. I have you on Facebook yes. and um, it's it, very positive messages on a yes. daily, almost twice a day, and it's really beautiful to hear somebody you. Um, is so young and who is really focused mm -hmm. on uh, being a good role model. So let's talk about that, being in the beauty industry, in the fashion world, it's so glamorous with acting and modeling. Mm -hmm. What? How do you stay centered? How do you not lose yourself? Like being uh, while going through the Miss Universe process, how is that for you? How do you center yourself? What mainly keeps me centered is knowing that at the end of the day, I'm the only one that has my back. I'm the only one that can save myself from a situation. I'm the only one that can pull myself out. So I better be smart and know what I'm doing in order to be that person that can get myself out of the hole. So that's my center of gravity, so, so to speak. Um, focus for today's episode is defining beauty. Mm -hmm. So what is beauty to you? What is beautiful to you? Looking at my little puppy, <laughs> that's beautiful. <laughs> I have a chihuahua and a German shepherd, I love animals. But in all honesty, what real beauty means to me is knowing who you are and understanding what you are and your purpose and being proud of you, that is beautiful. That is beautiful because there are so many people in this world that as you just said are lost or are walking around and they don't know where to go, they don't know what to do. And and that's not real beauty. Beauty is when you have that moment of peace and calm and tranquility that says, I can walk down the street and I don't have a penny in my pocket. I don't have a sweater on my back. I have no home, but I'm proud of who I am. And because of that pride, boom, it emanates out of your face, the way you walk, your hands, your talk. And you can, you can be, you know, nobody, so to speak. Everyone is somebody, but you can be nobody in the eyes of the world and you're beautiful. That's real beauty. I 
think beauty is everything from um, showing who you truly are, defying stereotypes. Um, I think essentially beauty is taking in the, your surroundings and showing it through your five senses, like everything you, through your actions, through how you express yourself, um, through what you see, what you feel, what you taste, what you hear. I think that's, in essence, that's what beauty is. If you look beautiful and you don't feel beautiful, you're not truly beautiful. If you feel beautiful, then you will look beautiful. I think that beauty is not necessarily a tangible thing. I think that beauty is in the story that each one of us has to tell. Uh, we each have a unique story and uh, we all have something to share and we all have something to learn. And I think that if we embrace our stories and we show them with pride, that that is truly beautiful. I think beauty is confidence. If you love something and you can really show that you love it, I think that's really beautiful. I find that in the acting industry or the entertainment industry, it concentrates a lot on, on um, being very skinny and um, having a certain look that you have to have. Um, and it is, it, it's very hard for young girls to, to know whether or not they're beautiful, if they have freckles or they have red hair or if there's such, there's such an emphasis on how you're supposed to look. Um, but it, it is kind of changing right now, but um, like I stressed before, I think it's very important that um, you get just accept yourself for who you are, accept what you have, and, and then and, and it all falls, all fall into place. <laughs> I actually think that it is getting a little bit better. Um, it depends on what industry you're looking at, but um, I think that a lot of people are accepting more of curves nowadays than they were before. So that's great. And <laughs> in cultural, like if you look at places like Africa, like a big woman is considered a, a healthy woman and beautiful, you know? And um, so I think that. Um, if we look at other cultures and see and see that, then we will actually see that you know what? It doesn't matter if you're skinny or if you're big. You're just beautiful. God, God made us all um, differently for a reason, and we're all unique in our own way, and that's beautiful. What I find really beautiful is I'm really attracted to modesty in others, and I feel modesty can only come when we truly appreciate the beauty within us as well as beauty all around us. Trisha Romani from Inspirational Talent and Modeling Agency. How are you doing, madame? Very well, thank you for having me. Thank you for joining. So tell us about Inspirational. What does Inspirational stand for? Inspirational Talent Modeling Group represents talent of all colors, curves, and communities. So our mandate is very much to showcase beauty of a broader perspective. So all different types of ages and all different sizes. And we have a very particular mandate about the type of talent we want. So we recruit people that are healthy, they have to have a healthy body image. So regardless of their size, they need to embrace every inch of it. Uh, we look for people that are confident. And we also require that you're involved in the community and doing community service in some way. Wow. So in the modeling world, that's quite unusual. How, how did the rest of the agencies or in the fashion world here in Vancouver take you? Did, did they take you seriously when you first started? To be honest, I got a lot of, oh, I'm going to have a hard time with that. Uh, there were a lot of people around the, the community as far as in the industry who thought it was a wonderful idea. A lot of people outside the industry said, what a wonderful idea, it's about time, right? Mm -hmm. But within the industry, because oh, it's not safe, yeah. right? So I didn't care. Absolutely, I was told you're going to have a hard time. I don't know that that's going to work. For me, it was about broadening the lens. I think women of all types of backgrounds are gorgeous. And I think we need to be showcasing that so that when young women flip the pages of a magazine, they see their face. Um, you know, talking about magazines and modeling, it, it reminds me of my past and my background. And um, I feel like it's... Uh, 
coming from a modeling world, I feel like it can be such an illusion, but for a little girl out there who's maybe seven or 10 years old, when she sees those images in magazines that are Photoshopped to the max, you know, then what kind of message are we sending to them? So how do you feel that as an agent and as somebody who has young models as well as older, what sort of responsibility do you feel that is on you and how are you contributing? I feel a tremendous responsibility and my best way to do it is to try and talk about it. We do volunteer outreach programs with the schools and we've got Natalie Tolson who's one of our models who does all kinds of great programs and talks about the myth around the beauty industry. And Natalie was in Canada's Next Top Model. Correct, exactly. And was she bullied on, on the show or? It was more that she was strongly encouraged to lose weight. Okay. Just to get thinner. Mm -hmm. And Natalie is about six feet tall. Correct. And what size, like a size four? Yes. Okay, wow. Even at that height, they want you to have like say a 34 or 35 hip. It's very, very slim. And what is Natalie doing now? Natalie full-time does a lot of this beauty outreach. It's great. She does model of love and she talks about accepting yourself and your own type of beauty. She goes in and talks with a lot of young girls to demythify the industry mm -hmm. and talk about it so that they understand that to create that picture took a whole team of people. One of my favorite quotes was Cindy Crawford who said, even I don't look like Cindy Crawford in the morning. Right? Or recently I interviewed Coco Rocha and she said, I'd really like to look like that girl on the cover. <laughs> right? Because she yeah. knows it's a team of hair and makeup and like you said, then there's the post-production. So they need to understand that that picture is not how that girl looks Yeah. Like. So if they're trying to and look like that And there needs to be more programs like that. So that's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, it's about creating the dialogue. So then you hope, if you've talked about it with them when they're seeing those images, they're understanding that they're fabricated. Three eight eight two. We are here with Aaliyah O'Brien. Aaliyah, how are you doing? Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, my pleasure. I'm absolutely happy to be here. So you have been really busy over the last few years acting on a bunch of uh, Canadian TV shows. Tell us about that. Um, well, I've uh, I just recently finished, um, well, the, the season finished airing of Men With Brooms, um, where I had a really great lead role on that, and that was a lot of fun. Um, I've had some pretty good guest stars and uh, supporting roles in films lately, and it's been a really good couple of years. Yeah, I've had a blast. Now, Men With Brooms, it was based on a film that was Men With Brooms? That's right, yes. Men With Brooms was based on a film that was done, gosh, I don't know, about eight years ago now with Paul Gross and uh, Paul Gross was actually in our series which was a lot of fun uh, to work with him and uh, yeah so I it was remember a bit of a him from that Mountie do do you sell so, <laughs> yeah how old were we then really uh, honestly <laughs> I was not even in Canada and I was like wow ah! is that what Canadians look like <laughs> amazing yes yes he looks exactly the same pretty much yeah so tell us what got you into the acting world um well I have my friend Dave Shan to thank for that. He um, he invited me to go to an acting class for fun uh, about seven years ago, I guess. And uh, I was in school for kinesiology at the time. I was a personal trainer. And uh, so I go to this acting class for fun and I ended up loving it. Like I just felt, I don't know, I felt so free and so connected and I felt so passionate about it that I was like, ooh, that's great, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this some more. And so I started taking more classes and dabbling and, and eventually it, it came time for me to um, weigh my passions and I, I guess kinesiology just kind of fell under the rug and acting was the winner and, and I moved to Vancouver. Yeah. And you're originally from Victoria. Yes. You were mentioning earlier that, you know, uh, spirituality is a big part of your life. Do you feel that that has helped you with your acting and it's helped you maybe stay grounded? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's the reason why I, I was able to choose acting, why, why I was able to connect to what's really important to me. Um, I feel like 
acting is an avenue for me to uh, live out my purpose and I think that um, the only reason I'm connected to that is because of my spirituality. So, um, you know, when I'm really connected and listening, I, I, that's when I'm making the right choices in my life or the best choices for me, I feel like, from that place. So our today's episode is focused on beauty. Now in the acting world or whether it's modeling. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's, it's like, not important. You don't think <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> well, somebody so beautiful as yourself, but do you feel that there's a lot of pressure put on women, you know, to yeah. look a certain way, to be a certain size and height? Men and women, um, but definitely women for sure. I think that so much of it is look based, looks based, and I mean, it's it's hard because um, so much of it is out of your hands, you know, and uh, you know we spend all this time and money. Look, making ourselves look a certain way, trying to look our best, and uh, and and it matters. I mean, beauty sells, and so I think it, it is a big stress in the industry for sure. So, how have you dealt with it so far? Um, I think that I mean, it definitely it it plays a toll on me. I, I, I would love to say that I'm so grounded and, you know, like, I, it doesn't matter to me, but but I, I definitely, you know, I spend money on products and clothes and do the right things because I know it is important in the industry. But I think where, uh, where I'm able to stay really connected is by having um, more than just more than just acting in my life, more of a spiritual connection, more of a connection to what's really important to me. And I, and I grew up with like amazing hippie parents that I think just sort of infused me with this idea that there's more to life. And so that keeps me from going crazy. <laughs> so talking about um, how beauty affects, you know, in this industry, this glamorous industry, how have you dealt with the pressures yourself? The pressures of beauty. Uh, well, I deal with it. You know, I uh, I do a lot of personal growth work and personal development work, and I think that that is what keeps me really grounded because um, I really am trying to build a, a centered sense of self, a, a lot of um, self-love and self-esteem from within, as opposed to uh, trying to get it from somewhere out there or out here, I should say. What are your values? <laughs> what are my values? Well, my values uh, are definitely uh, relationships. Um, family is very important to me. Um, compassion is very important to me. I'm, I'm really trying to build that within myself and within the world. Um, yeah, I, I value joy. Um, I value um, peace. I, I value uh, I value money. I value you know having nice things. Um, but the the most important ones are community, uh, relationships, and joy. I would yeah. say. Yeah. I would love to ask you what what is beautiful to you and what what do you define beauty as? What is beauty? What is beauty? Um, I feel like beauty, let me see, beauty is, is an experience I have, I think. Uh, when I see something and I feel something inside that moves me, there's, there's a sense of like magnificence with what I see, I, I experience that as beauty and I think that's, that's everywhere, you know, it's in plants, it's in people, it's in objects. Um, but it really boils down to the, the common denominator in all that is my experience that I have of it. And, uh, yeah. You're really passionate about acting and, you know, you feel that that is your career. So what are your hopes that as a woman, as a strong woman, what sort of image do you want to leave or what sort of uh, legacy do you want to leave as an actress? Um, you know, my website's coming out soon. It's just in the works right now, and I and I really, in the process of creating it, I really wanted to have an emphasis on silliness and like joy and play and I don't know, not not taking life too seriously. And it's interesting because most of the characters I play are pretty badass, and they're usually like the bad guy, and you know, there's an element of evil and stuff. But I but I have fun doing that, and and me in my personal life. I'm pretty ridiculous, and I like I love that, and I and I I, well, I want to stress more of that in it's our more lives, of more a play, like yeah, yeah, definitely a childlike essence, and I I think that that's so important because you know we uh, and I find myself 
day to day too, struggling with um, getting bogged down with feeling you know stressed about things. And when I when I check in and I connect, I can shake that all off and and really just play everywhere in my life, play at work, play with my friends, and it feels so much more uh, authentic and connected and just fun. What makes you feel beautiful? Uh, what makes me feel beautiful? I think you know I feel the most beautiful when and, and I, I'm, I'll take it back to the being connected to self thing and I and I experience that when I'm I, I do this thing every day where I go for a walk for for at least five minutes and I just connect with myself which basically means like I feel all, the, all my senses and I and I have an experience of myself that's not um, cluttered with life and things and and I you know feel the air on my face and the sun on my arms and and I I think that's when I feel the most beautiful because I feel like I'm really being authentic it's that authenticity that's really important to me yeah thank you so much for joining us today oh my pleasure <laughs> oh <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, my pleasure. It's so always so beautiful getting together with you. I think there's this song by TLC, uh, something about how you can put all the makeup you want, you can get all the fancy hair products, you can have the fancy clothes, but if you don't feel good on the inside if you don't feel beautiful on the inside you can have these layers on you will never really truly feel beautiful and i feel that that has something that has come with age and connecting to my own faith has really allowed me to understand that true beauty really comes from really knowing that you can age you can wear whatever clothes you want you'll still be beautiful Audrey Hepburn once said, For beautiful eyes, look for the good in others. For beautiful lips, speak only words of kindness. And for poise, walk with the knowledge that you're never alone. Until next time, I'm your host, Zara Durrani. Make sure to find us on Facebook as well as Twitter. And check out our website, lifeinstylewithzara.com. Take one. A little harder than that. Take two. Second thing. Thank you. And you're watching Life and Style with Zara.